Hello, First Church family and friends, and welcome to our online worship service. This weekend is Labor Day weekend, and so we, along with the rest of the country, pay tribute to the achievement and to the contribution of American workers everywhere. Even on the days where uh, Michelle and I swap stories about how difficult our jobs can be, we always circle back in prayer, thanking God for the opportunity to work. The opportunity no, not only provides means for our family, but also allows us to be generous to other people with those resources. So in gratitude, we lift our hearts and our spirits to God for his many blessings. We're going to begin our worship singing the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Jesus died 
Would you bow with me in prayer? Almighty God, a creator of the world, we give you thanks for the gift of stewardship and work. Deliver us in our various occupations from the service of self alone, that we may do our work in truth and beauty and for the common good. God of justice, we pray for all workers that they would receive fair compensation and treatment in their labor. For those who seek work, provide jobs, the young and old, skilled and unskilled alike. For those who cannot work, provide sustenance. Make those who lead the industries and commerce of this country responsive to your perfect will. Build up the leaders of our country, a respect for all laborers. Deliver us, Lord Jesus, from the maligning evils of greed, sloth, and gluttony, that we may lead lives of holiness and service to you and our neighbor. We ask these things for your good and your glory. Amen. You've probably heard the sentence, the devil made me do it. Perhaps you've said it yourself. I usually say it in reference to, oh, when I've eaten perhaps too much of something or any form of, of gluttony, um, that's usually what I say. The devil made me do it. The devil made me eat that extra chocolate bar. Most of the time, I think we say this jokingly, but maybe deep down, there is a part of us that wishes that we could just brush away any of our personal responsibility for our actions and our attitudes, that somehow we're not responsible for what we say and what we do and how we live. Maybe we'd also like to think that we are powerless over the forces of darkness that we're merely the victims of the forces of darkness. Maybe that's what we'd really like to be able to, 
to think. Today's lesson, though, would teach us otherwise. So we're going to continue in the letter to the Ephesian church. And I have to say that this letter, though it was written so long ago, still speaks today to our human experience and our community. So let's listen. I'll be reading chapter 4, starting at verse 22, through chapter 5, verse 2, and then again, verses 15 and 16 in chapter 5. Hear this word of the Lord. You were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly beloved children, and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was a bit of a tomboy when I was a child and I, I played a lot of ball and I ran around and, and I, I loved to climb trees as well when I was a kid. And I grew up in a neighborhood that had a lot of great uh, climbing trees for us. Uh, some of the easiest ones for me to climb were, of course, the, the shorter ones, the ones that there were branches down lower. And they were the ones that, they were the crab apple trees in our yard. They, of course, had all these uh, really stiff thorns on those branches, and you had to be very careful climbing those trees. And um, I got scratched many times, but it was always a lot of fun. Um, you had to be Careful, as I said, but my sister, she, she was so much better at climbing trees than I was. Um, I was uh, not able to jump as high, and I wasn't as tall as, as her, and, but she was able to, to kind of jump and grab a branch on those bigger trees and get a foothold on the trunk and, and be able to hoist herself up, and up she'd go into the tree. And, and um, if I wanted to climb the tree, then what I needed was some help. And my sister, she would uh, give, you know, she would lace her fingers together sometimes, and, and I'd put my foot in her, in her hands, or she'd bend her knee, and I'd put my foot on her knee, and, and she would boost me up and, so that I could grab the branch and get a, get a foothold up onto the tree then. But she would give me the initial foothold and I would be able to get up into those taller trees with her then. Now, in those kinds of circumstances, when you're a kid climbing trees, um, having a foothold is a great thing. Or if you're wall climbing, rock climbing, that kind of thing, you need a good foothold. Um, but that's not always the case for everything. In today's passage, we heard the words, do not give the devil a foothold. The writer of Ephesians did not say, let's be very clear, the writer did not say, the devil made us do it. Rather, 
it's very clear that what we do, how we live, can actually give the devil, give darkness, the powers of darkness, a boost. What we do actually gives evil a boost into the world. What we do can give those forces of darkness leverage into our lives. And of course, one of the ways is through unresolved anger, unresolved anger, that that gives the devil a foothold into our lives. It says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Now, a popular piece of advice for newlyweds from, from others is, is many times, just don't ever go to bed angry. And, and I've shared with you, I was married for many, many years, and, um, and Jeffrey and I never went to bed angry, except for once. And I can tell you that was the biggest mistake we ever made, going to bed angry with one another because something happens with that anger that's inside of you when you go and sleep on it, when you let it linger inside of you. It settles into your being, that anger. Your grudge can settle in. Your side of the story gets rooted and uh, you become more closed off to one another, entrenched in your anger, which can then lead to something more. Anger, unresolved anger, leads to even deeper ways that we harm our relationships with each other. When we get angry with someone, we don't always know the full story. We just know what we think about it what we feel about it. We, and, and in the end, we might be making assumptions about what the other person meant when they said that or what they, what they were intending when they did that. We might make assumptions about that other person that we're angry with. We might assume that the other person had ill intentions toward us. And I think we have seen that and experienced that so much in, in, our, in our community life in these last um, many months, um, particularly around our COVID situation. The arguments that we hear around masks and vaccines and, and all of that Folks who feel very strongly one way or another can, can many times easily make assumptions about someone who feels the opposite way or thinks in another way about it. And I think we've all succumbed to making assumptions about someone else during this entire COVID mess. For instance, we might assume, well, they're just living in fear or we'll assume they're being selfish. We'll assume they don't care, or they don't have a very strong faith. Those kinds of assumptions, I've heard all of them. I've heard all of them through these last months. And that's just one situation in which we find ourselves divided around and making assumptions about each other. And I know that there are so many other assumptions that we make about one another, maybe around political differences, assumptions about people from another race or another economic background. We, we, <laughs> we make assumptions so very easily and readily. Um, and, and what happens is that I think assumptions are the result of letting the sun set on our anger. And a lot of times our anger is out of a misunderstanding. That we let the sun set on our anger without seeking clarification, without trying to work things out and, and figure out, wait a minute, what's happening here? And assumptions then settle in and they entrench us. And actually, they provide a foothold, the foot, a foothold for the forces of darkness to get into our lives, into our hearts. 
we're actually providing the devil a foothold into our own selves. And then, of course, this whole thing about anger and unresolved anger, um, it can also lead to not only assumptions, but what we call triangulation. An untold number of times in my life when I have been frustrated with someone, many times what I will do is I will go and talk to someone else about the someone that I'm frustrated with. Sound familiar? We, we like to call it venting, if you will, but it's not necessarily helpful, not in and of itself. If person A is mad at person B, but instead of going and talking to person B, goes and talks to person C and airs all the complaints and everything, now person C feels for person A, feels their pain, feels their frustration, whatever, and perhaps person, person C begins living with the same assumptions about person B. And now their relationship is affected. Maybe person C becomes mad at person B for no reason except for because person A is. And if they do, person B now has no idea. They know something's wrong, but how can they fix it? Person A and person B are now, or C are, are upset, but how can they fix it if they don't know what it is? How can they begin to work things out and find resolution if nobody's talking about it? And so assumptions and anger and separation can spread in that way. And we actually give a foothold. and We help the devil get up into our community, into our relationships with one another. And let's not forget the part of our human experience, that um, not so lovely part of our human experience called accusations. We've talked about assumptions, triangulation, and accusations. Words like, well, you never, dot, 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 or you always, dot, dot, dot. Whenever I hear those kinds of words leveled at me, my defenses go right up. Just, they just go right up and my rebuttal accusations start forming in my mind. I think this is pretty common for all of us. And the potential then circle and cycle of brokenness and anger takes hold. And we continue giving the devil a foot up, a foothold, we give the devil a boost into our lives, into, into the community. We give the devil a boost into our hearts. We're actually helping the forces of darkness along in, in how we live when we do these kinds of things. Honestly, we've seen enough of this in our world. We've seen enough of it in the church as well. This is why, beginning in a couple of weeks, we're going to be focusing on having holy and healthy conversations with one another. We're going to have a worship series looking at what does the Bible teach us about these things. And then on October 3rd and the last day of the series, we will have a training event with a leader who will teach us crucial skills for good conversation. It is my hope, along with the writer of the Ephesian uh, letter, that we, as the people of God, will stop giving the devil a foothold. And there are clearly ways that that will help. There are clear ways on how we refuse to give the devil a foothold into our lives and into our community. We don't give the devil a, a helping hand helping foot up, if you will, a boost when we actually share with one another, when we share with those who are in need. That is one way that we do not give the forces of darkness more power. We don't 
help the devil along, when we work to build each other up, instead of tear each other down. When we're kind and compassionate and forgiving with one another, those kinds of things do not make room. They don't give room for the devil to get into our own hearts and into our community, into our relationships with one another. There are things that we can do that refuse to give the devil a foothold into our lives. I was given permission to share this story that just took place, I believe, this week. And at least I, w I heard it this week. It was such a timely testimony about this very thing. Two people within our congregation who have had differing thoughts around vaccines. They sat down and they actually talked with each other. And they shared thoughts, their own thoughts with each other without accusations, without assumptions, without triangulation, nothing like that. They, they literally had a conversation with one another. They knew they had differing views and understanding about things, and they knew those differing thoughts could affect their relationship, but this conversation that they had, the testimony that I've heard from this conversation, it brought them healing. It brought them the, this deeper appreciation for one another. The time they spent together took away any foothold that the devil could take advantage of. And they came away from that conversation stronger in their friendship and with even more appreciation for one another. This is what it means to live as the body of Christ. Those kinds of opportunities. And we do not give the devil a foothold when we live like that. Our passage today began with an image of putting off and then putting on. Taking off and, and putting something on. It said to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in your attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This kind of intentional Christian living is how we have power over the forces of darkness. This is the way of Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. He showed us the truth that the devil can't make us do anything. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you have showed us the way of living fully and wholly with one another. And we ask that you would guide us and lead us through every day of our lives, that we can live in such a way as to not let the powers of evil get into our hearts and into our community and rip us apart and tear us down. So come send to us your spirit, your very self. Help us to, to take off that old self every day and put on this new self, the new self that is found in you in the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit within us and among us, we pray. Amen. COVID has actually given us the opportunity to rethink some of our gathering spaces and how we use our building and how actually important all those spaces are. We have made a lot of changes over this last year to some of our spaces. We have a new sound system and lighting going into the sanctuary so that we're able to uh, share our worship as a live stream in the near future. We have refreshed office spaces, classrooms, gathering spaces, meeting rooms that have technology so that people can share um, remotely in a meeting or a class. Um, and then, of course, the, the latest thing is a completely redesigned and built courtyard in the middle of our building, a new gathering space for people, an outdoor, beautiful a garden space for us to be able to use. 
Much of this is the result of tireless hours of so many church members, and I am so grateful for all of that volunteer and, and energy that has been spent. Whether they've been big changes or small changes, all of it is meant to enhance how we gather and how we spend time together. Your offerings have supported this work, supported the work of sharpening the ministry tool that we call our church building. So thank you for your generosity and come by and check everything out as soon as you can. Before we close, a couple of announcements. First of all, um, our tailgate Sunday is next weekend. So even if you are a, uh, an online worship attender, uh, please come by. Uh, we will be gathering out in the back parking lot, sharing food and fellowship. It'll be a great opportunity for the church family to reconnect. So that'll start right after the 10 o'clock worship service. So at 11 o'clock, back parking lot. 
September 12th. The other thing is that beginning on September 19th, we will start our worship series on Holy Conversations, and that ends on October 3rd with our training for the entire church family on how to have a healthy conversation with one another. Crucial stuff for, our, for the health of our community these days. The other thing is, is that our worship schedule for the fall is going to remain at 10 o'clock with one worship service blended, um, blended music styles in that worship service, both online and in person at 10 o'clock. Children's ministries and youth ministries will also be starting back up on this new um, schedule and youth groups will be on Sunday evenings. So now... Friends, let me share what the writer of the Ephesians says. He says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. But always, always let us give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go in peace and with the Lord's blessings. Amen.